Hello there. Well, we're back. Uh, it's May Day, May 1st. Just thought I'd show you what uh, like one day of progress looks like around here. Got this guy out again yesterday. Made some more of those. Those Every one of those is a patch that we've done. Wow. That's quite a few patches. I didn't count them, but there's quite a few patches. So anyway, that's what this machine does. That's what this little uh, punch does. And it's a nice kit. I won't waste a lot of time on it, but um, there it is. Roper Whitney. Anyway, it comes with... Uh, if I can it How many? Six, seven dies. Seven dies, so you can do everything from, I don't remember what it is, eighth inch up to seven sixteenths. Make punch those holes in the in the metal and it goes up to i forgot 14 gauge or something like that it's pretty heavy duty anyway that's what we made these uh, plugs out of there's one right there and that system works quite nice there's one there there's a bunch over here there's three right there one, see the bottom one, two, three. Uh, there's one right, where am I looking here? Here, one right there. And what the way those work, when I say they work nice, is if you uh, carefully make the hole the right size, when you put that plug in there, if you can reach both sides or you have two, you, you know, two people if you can't, you put the plug in there and you back it up with a dolly on the back and you beat it with the hammer on the front and uh, the plug stretches a bit. It flattens and stretches a bit so, so it anchors itself in the hole nice and flush with the sheet metal and anchors itself in the hole uh, sufficiently enough that you can weld it. Uh, so it works quite nice. You can put a magnet behind it and do it that way too. But uh, like I said, that system works quite well. My son found that. I think it's a Ron Covell, uh, at least it was in one of his videos or something. My son saw it, and, and like I said, if you if you make the, the the plug, and then you carefully make the hole the right size, you know, pick your drill bits real carefully, you make the hole the right size, so the plug just goes in the hole. Uh, the plug is kind of deformed just a tiny bit when it's punched, so as you flatten it, it stretches it uh, enough that it grabs itself in the hole. And the other thing yesterday that happened was um, all the welds that were already there got ground. You see it's all smooth. And believe, me, believe it or not, that took a fair amount of time. So uh, it's ready now for the little bit of filler that I'm going to do over it. Another thing I did yesterday was, I, again, I spent a fair amount of time cleaning the place. The place got to be a regular pigsty. You know, with all this grinding and stuff, the floor gets covered in this black dust. Uh, and it gets quite nasty. You kneel in it. It's on your clothes. You know what I mean? You can't, it's like I said, it's just plain nasty. So I lifted the car up and in the process of doing that, I found that the car was getting kind of unstable because it took all the weight out of the front. First of all, it's on the lift backwards. It's not intended to go on the lift face in this direction. And with a complete car, it ain't so bad. But when you put this car up there now and all the weights on the back, there's nothing on the front. It gets kind of unstable. Uh, like I said, we took the motor out and all that stuff off the front of it. So now there's nothing on the front. And like I said, it was getting kind of unstable. So I um, put it on the jack stands, as you can see here, and I repositioned the arms, took the, the wheels off, which let me put the back arms back as far as they'll go underneath the, I can't quite get under the spring, the uh, differential where the springs mount but I can get to the springs right in front of that location. So it's it's way more stable now. And, and another thing that happened yesterday, this was long overdue too. You see this uh, arm here? This releases, you hear that? That's those ratchet, those latches that catch the mechanism on the lift as you raise the car so that when you get the car where you want it, you let it down on those latches and it's not being held up by the hydraulics. Well, this arm got very difficult. It was hard to push when the thing was new. You really had a lean on it. I noticed when the uh, 
installer was here and he tried that you could see the expression on his face he was even surprised he didn't do anything about it but he was even surprised so yesterday i finally had had enough you'd go to let the car down and the latch on the other side would continually catch you know and all of a sudden that one side would be coming down the other side would be hung up so yesterday I, I took the time and i took this piece off and I, what i found is that there's a little pulley a little tiny like a one inch diameter pulley this cable is this is the cable that operates those latches so the cable goes up this leg across and down the other leg and it goes it goes over four of those little pulleys uh those little pulleys just have a bushing in them evidently and a shaft uh it's not a real precision fit it's loose it doesn't work very well and there was absolutely no lubricant on any of them uh, either on the pivot for the little arm on either side or any of the pulleys had no lubricant so like i said i uncovered them all i um lubricated all the shafts including the little arms and like i said it made a whirl i mean now you can you can hear the latch on the other side and it does, you don't have to lean on it to make it work. Anyway, that was like yesterday's progress in here. It looks a lot nicer. Feels a lot nicer to come in here and work. Haven't done anything here today. I was out in the garden again. Um, getting things ready for the plants. Did some layout. I got a, uh, trying a new trellising system for the pepper plants. And I was laying that out and getting that ready. And here it is. It's... Uh, 325 so like i said frequently it's three o'clock before i get out here this is one of those see you later Hello. bye uh it's saturday i believe it is may 5th and here we are getting a little further don't know how well you can see that, but the last few holes up there on the firewall got welded up yesterday and ground smooth. Uh, only a few more to go. There's, uh, where is it, up here? Those are the old uh, parking brake uh, hardware. There's some pulleys for the cable on the handbrake and the actual hole for the cable to come through. We're mounted on those, this is two, five holes there. And there uh, there is four down here. You see two of them are already welded and the other two are yet to go. And what we're doing today is uh, getting this ready. Let's see if I can get back far. I see that pan there is all cleaned. And this side is clean. This is like, right now is like a half hour's worth of work doing that section. Here's what it looks like, what I'm starting with. This is after just cleaning all the old road grease and stuff off of it. Uh, I'm afraid to paint over that because going over that with the new paint, I don't know if it's gonna stick. So what I'm doing is using this, the angle grinder with the knotted wire wheel. I've done a whole bunch of this with that. That works real good. I think I've wore out, worn out about four of those wire wheels between doing the uh, firewall and the chassis. Whoops. Firewall and the chassis and uh, a lot of the inner fender panels with the wire wheel. That, that's what you just heard. <coughs> so, uh, here we are making more progress just wanted to show that because i noticed it yesterday while this was up in the air we got a bunch of these things here you see some of our uh, other youtube folks old time garage cold war motors more old time garage there so anyway see you later thanks for watching Okay, well, there's another hour and a half, I would say. You know, I forgot to look at the clock, but seems like uh, it was about that long. And what this amounts to, what you're looking at here amounts to, is um, this section was all done with the wire wheel from 
this uh, cross member, whatever you want to call it, brace back was done with the wire wheel. And from there forward to here looked like this. So I did that with the wire wheel. This last hour and a half, I did this section with the wire wheel. And then I took the die grinder and a scuff pad, one of those Rolock scuff pads, you know, like a, a scotch Bright, and did the whole thing with the scuff pad. So I'm confident with that, you can see it's got some scratches. It's got a nice tooth for the paint to uh, adhere to, I think. I think I'm going to leave that just like that, or, you know, clean it, but not make it any smoother. I'm not as concerned under here about a real smooth finish as I am about one that's stuck on there real good. So Monday I'm going to the paint supplier and I'm going to get whatever primer I need to do this. Is this nice clean bare metal? I think it should. Some of these new products now say you don't need to prime them and I think this is one of them. But I don't uh, put much faith in that. I like to put some primer under it first. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get whatever's appropriate primer for this finish and do a coat of primer on it first and then uh, a couple, two, three coats, I say two, two to three wet coats of this material that I'm using up here. And that's what it looks like when it's done. Okay. So yeah, so right now I've got probably two and a half hours in this, I guess, from that to that on that section, those two sections. Anyway, later. Hi guys, we're back. Um, doing more of the same, kind of trying to get this underfloor stuff ready. Spent a little time here yesterday and a little time the day before and this is where we're at. Uh, We'll try and keep this short. I'm sure this is getting boring for some of you. Uh, this is prepared now, finally. I remember I got all the old paint stuff that was on there off. So, um, I think now once I clean this, with like a degreaser type of thing, you know, uh, wax and oil and whatever degreaser, uh, it's ready for a primer, ready to start painting. So what I've done is the wire wheel, like I said before, I followed that up with a scotch bright kind of a pad, a scuff pad. You can see the, the tooth it left, which I'm happy with. Uh, and uh, went to the paint place this morning and I got some primer for it and uh, a little more finish paint for it. There's more of that coming. They, they didn't have any of the gloss. I wanted satin, that's all they had was gloss. So, but they're getting more of it. So uh, here we are. We we're getting ready. I mean, getting close. Almost done with the patching. And that hasn't changed since my last segment. This stuff came. All this Eastwood stuff. The the black the the, the cans in the box are all the finish. That's um, what they call extreme chassis black. Not the epoxy variety, the other one, the regular one, the 1K, or they call it. And then I have some primer. And I have the cleaner. And I have the red, the red dots are epoxy primer. And then also some uh, putty. The little tub is putty and the, the little um, red plastic bags are the little... Um, up applicators for the putty and uh, the hardener for the putty. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'll talk to you later. And please uh, like and comment. Because uh, always, always uh, interested to hear what you have to say. Bye. Quite a few of them up there.
you know how well you can see here. I got this zoomed as much as it'll go. 